Welcome to RC Foam Fighters Bulletproof RC Plane Build Along Number One. Um, we're starting phase two of the build. This is going to include installing all of the different components onto the plane. I do intend on moving through this phase of the build fairly quickly as it's pretty straightforward just installing all of the equipment. Um, I will be putting together a list of everything needed for phase two and it will be posted onto the blog shortly. So please check out the link in the sidebar after you get done watching the video. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and jump right back into the build and start phase two. All right, there are several different motors that you can uh, go with on this plane. Pretty much anything that would fit on a stick mount will probably work because that's what we're gonna have as far as the mount for the motor. Um, I've decided to go with the more powerful motor this time. This motor I got off of Hobby City um, it's a 2700 kV motor, that means it'll turn 2700 RPM per volt. Um, I would suggest any motor above 2000 would be okay. You're going to want a fast turning motor for this plane, something with at least 2000 kV. Um, somewhere between 2000 and 3000 ought to work fine. You want to be able to turn somewhere between a 5 inch to a 7 inch prop. Um, I've decided to go with this one just because I've read a lot of the reviews on Hobby City and it's supposed to be a pretty good motor. Um, this motor I've already static tested and it will put out about 500 watts of power turning a 6 by 5.5 prop which is what's on here now. So this plane should be quite a bit quicker than some of the other ones that I've had. Um, I've already got the stick mount glued onto the bottom of the plane. Basically all I did was slotted it right along where the center line is, the width of the stick mount, and epoxied it in there. This piece for this particular mount is about six inches long. Um, if you're using a different type of stick mount, um, you may need to adjust the length of the stick. And depending on what type of motor you're using, whether it's mounted forward or backward, um, this one is actually really a helicopter motor. It has a built-in fan that helps suck air through the motor to keep it cool. Um, I particularly like that about this one. That's why I chose this motor because the summer months are coming and it's going to get a lot hotter. And I'm hoping this is going to help keep the engine cooler. Um, Alright, a couple of quick notes on making your stick mount. You want to make 100% sure that you have it lined up with the center line, straight down the center. Um, if you have this crooked either way, it's going to cause the plane to turn, so you want to make sure that it's dead on the center line. Um, I also added a couple little uh, wood gussets to help strengthen the wood mount on mine because uh, it does stick out a little bit farther because the motor is mounted backwards on this one. It actually hangs off the front on towards the front. Um, depending on which stick mount you use, you may or may not need to do this, um, or you may just need to adjust it, make them a little bit shorter. Um, on the other style stick mounts where the motor is mounted on the back side, it will be shorter by an inch so the wood won't need to come back as far. And basically I just epoxied it onto the wood piece and glued it down to the foam. Um, this stiffened up the mount considerably. Um, without it, it did flex quite a bit so you will definitely need to make these to add on if you're using this motor. Um, the wood pieces were actually scraps that came from when we cut the back plate. These triangles here work pretty good. And all I did was I sat them down with the edge flat against the wood and even with the front here. And then I just marked the dot on the wood here and just draw the line across where it intersects from here to there and cut them off and they fit perfect right in there. Um, so depending on which motor mount you're using, you will have to adjust these to whatever size mount you're using. Okay next we're going to be uh, adding on the elevrons. I've already got mine cut out. They're made out of eighth inch thick balsa wood. Um, let's go ahead and show you how to lay out the dimensions and cut these out. All right we're going to need a piece of uh, eighth inch by three inch by 36 inch long balsa to make the two elevrons. Basically we're going to just uh, cut two pieces to a length of 12 and 3 quarter inches long. You can use the box cutter to do that. Um, afterwards, we're going to cut off a half an inch to make them two and a half inches wide. So just mark in a half an inch on both ends of the wood and then cut down that line as well. And that should give us a piece that's going to be two and a half inches wide 
by 12 and 3 quarter inches long and we need two of them. Alright now that we have our two pieces cut out um, we just need to measure over with the square flat against the bottom an inch and a half from the edge over line it up on the square and then we're gonna come up an inch and a half as well and put a dot so basically it's one and a half inch over one and a half inch up squared off the bottom then we're gonna flip the square over to do this, the other side um, it's two and a half inches in from the edge and just put a dot right on the edge all right then all we got to do is connect the dots as we usually do and that'll draw our outline of our ailerons and just do this on both pieces of wood and cut them out with the box cutter and you should be good to go and just go to the corner on this one as well all right and that's going to be basically the shape of our ailerons once you have them cut out you're going to want to sand off all the edges so that they're nice and smooth. Um, and then on the long side, we're going to be rounding it off so that way when it's hinged, it'll roll nicely. So we'll take the sanding block and just sand it to a rounded radius on the long end. 